Welcome back, everyone, to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio show here on this Saturday morning. And we've got a little cloud cover here on the Central Coast, but it will burn off to the coast. And inland temperatures are supposed to be very warm throughout the entire Southwest. In fact, nice weather across the country as we start this month of June, which is grilling season and certainly a time of season when we have a lot of fresh produce at the local farmer's market. And have you ever thought of throwing it on the grill? Uh, You might think, oh, yeah, there's specific things we throw on the grill like asparagus. Of course, you have to line it up properly or it falls right through. (laughs) And then, (laughs) right, Patty? You have to be careful. (laughs) Yes. Uh, By the way, I'm Randall White. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. This is Patty Pyburn over here. She is. Good morning. An ardent, would that be the word, an ardent griller? (laughs) I think so, because just about everything I. You know, the main course, it's yes. done on the grill, typically. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. I, I think every meal I've ever had at your house <laughs> it's is been on uh, the grill. <laughs> done on the grill. Well, someone who really knows her way around a grill, especially when it comes to vegetables, is Andrea Chessman. Uh, she's the author of The New Vegetarian Grill, 250 Flame-Kissed Recipes for Fresh Inspired Meals. And welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's nice to speak with you, especially after looking through your book. And boy, you do have some inspiration there. I love it. You're in Vermont, is that right? I am in Vermont, and it is raining and blowing and not a good day for grilling. No, it's not. Well, uh, too bad you're not here on the on the West Coast today, anyway. Vermont's gorgeous. I, In fact, in one of our destination segments coming up, I really want to book the city of uh, Burlington to talk a little bit about uh, all the food there and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Andrea, what is the most common misconception when it comes to throwing vegetables or fruit on the grill? The most common misconception is that you just stick it on a skewer and um, cook it alongside your meat. And that is the most boring thing that you can do to vegetables and not particularly kind to them anyway because vegetables have different, um, different doneness times. Oh, right. So you get some things that are overcooked and some things that are not cooked. And you're limited to what you can skewer. So what I tell people if they're serious about grilling vegetables is get yourself a vegetable grill plate, which is a, um, a flat metal plate, costs about, I don't know, 15 to $20 at a hardware store. And it, it's just this flat plate, and it has holes in the middle. And if you stick that on the grill, you can have vegetables of any size or shape, and they won't fall through. Yeah, like I was speaking about the asparagus. Now, I've seen the mesh, Patty, both of us, we have um, them. The, it's like a mesh, what, sandwich thing that you put the vegetables between. I haven't seen the grill plate, have you? Right, those baskets that you could put, like, fish or something in. Basket. But I do, Randall, I'm sorry to say, I <laughs> have the grill plate, and it's just like it's like a big pan with holes in it that you just set right on the grill. Uh-huh. Now, do you need to use, like, olive oil on it, or...? Well, I like to slick the vegetables with uh, olive oil first. I see. Before I put it on. But what I like to do is use that flat plate just like a uh, saute pan. And so I'll cut the vegetables so that they're recipe red or, you know, ready to eat. And I'll cut up um, into bite-sized pieces and then j- literally saute it on the, on the grill, f- uh, flipping it around. And then it's, when it comes off the grill, it's hot and ready to eat. Mm. Um, if you grill the the vegetables in long you know in long slices, then they have to be sliced before they can go into uh, your mouth. Right. And right. they're <laughs> just they're just ready to go. And you can do lots of stuff with them, like stuff them into pita pockets and oh, yeah. um, put them on top of pasta, put it on top of rice. It's it's really very versatile. So. Andrea, I have uh, done exactly what you've said before. In fact, my son asked me the other day, I can't remember what we were making, but he said, oh, can you actually cook that on the stove? Because it, we just traditionally... He's you know, only known <laughs> it on the grill. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, how do you do eggplant? I want to hear your tips on doing it, because I love grilled eggplant. Okay, this is going to sound really fussy, but I really believe that three-eighths of an inch is the absolute optimum width of an eggplant slice. All right, everyone get out their kitchen I, rulers. <laughs> I, but, but if you do it too thin, it can be disaster. If you do it too thick, it doesn't cook right. Too thin and it's shoe leather. Too thick and it's just rubbery and unpleasant. So three-eighths of an inch. And, and, you know, and this took a ridiculous amount of uh, experimentation, but that's why 
um, you have people writing cookbooks and people just cooking. No, that's <laughs> true. Do you have to? Somebody was willing to do that. D- <laughs> Andrea, you. do you do you need to prepare the eggplant, marinate it, or put salt on it, or anything in a specific way to uh, keep it from getting bitter? If your eggplant is fresh from the garden, fresh from the farmer's market, you do not need to salt it. If it's an aged uh, supermarket eggplant, which maybe, I don't know, in California, maybe your eggplants aren't aged, but ours are by the time they come from California. Right. So a supermarket California can be improved by salting because it gets rid of the bitter juices. If it's really fresh, it shouldn't be bitter at all. Hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Now, Andrea, I love to do um, peppers, like red, yellow, green peppers on the grill. And like you said, I put olive oil on them first. It sort of helps that process of getting the skin off later. So I like to do a bunch of those when I'm cooking something else and then use them. I put them in the fridge and put them on sandwiches or add them to salads, you know, and kind of use them throughout the week. Right. And it helps to put them in a baggie, right? After right after they've come off the grill. Or a covered bowl so that you can get the skins off of them. They just need to steam a bit. Uh huh. Andrea, what is your favorite grouping <laughs> of vegetables to cook on the grill? Um, I am madly in love with eggplant this week. <laughs> uh, this week, right? <laughs> I adore grilled eggplant too, Andrea. I love hearing that. <laughs> but um, but actually in Vermont, it's asparagus season. Oh. Um, so, but it's whatever is fresh and wonderful, and and what I like to do is take whatever is fresh and wonderful, grill it on the grill, cut it up in, in bite-sized pieces, grill it on the grill, and toss it with hot pasta mm. and goat cheese. Mm. So if you take the goat cheese and you toss it with the hot pasta, it forms this, this creamy sauce. And then you just add the vegetables, and it's a main dish, and it's vegetarian, and it is super. It sounds so great, and the grill just adds that great flavor. I'm curious, Andrea, if you have um, a vegetable that would just surprise us, that somebody would cook it on the grill, or we would say, wait, what? Brussels sprouts on the grill? I don't know. Do you have a a vegetable that would be shocking on the grill? I was that way with artichokes until I had them out at uh, the... In Casmelia, the hitching post. Thank you, Ricardo. The hitching post in Casmelia. Mm. I had my first grilled artichoke, and I was like, "Whoa! I don't want to ever do it any other way." What's yours, Andrea? I I cannot think. Um, well, I think, I think a, grilled peaches are kind oh, of. Oh, I was gonna. I people. was going to say. I think a lot of people think savory the minute they think of the grill, and they don't think sweet. But there's a lot you can do mm. with fruits. Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Correct, but. I have a separate um, grill plate that is just dedicated to fruit because you really don't want that garlic residue in the peaches. Oh, Oh, good point. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then how do you, after they're grilled, how do you use them? Um, Chocolate. (laughs) Chocolate sauce. (laughs) You know, on a a lady fingers, what, you know, any, there's lots of, you know, any different way. The other thing I'll say about grilling fruit is never cover the fruit, never, or never use the lid of the grill. Oh, when you're okay. grilling fruit because it just deposits deposits this sooty residue that's kind of unpleasant. Too much smoke and, and that sort of thing uh, yeah, infused into the fruit, right? You just want more of the caramelizing that comes from the flame. Right. Andrea Chessman, author of The New Vegetarian Grill. She has 250 different recipe ideas in there to inspire you. In fact, that's the subtitle to her book. Uh, what is your What's your latest book out? I have... This week, literally this week, I think the pub date is June 5th, The Pickled Pantry, and it's um, about 185 or 150 recipes for pickles, relishes, chutneys, and more. Oh, I thought you were referring to my liquor cabinet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Pickled Pantry. That sounds good. We'll have to have you back on at a later date, Andrea, to discuss that one. Thank you. All right, Andrea Chessman, all the information available at eatdrinkexplore.com, as is for all of our guests. And this week, I posted it all ahead of time. So it's there on the website oh, right now. You smart. can link directly to Andrea's website. Thank you for being on the show and uh, stay dry today in Vermont. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right, straight ahead, we're headed to Austin, Texas. It's on my go to list of cities, and we'll explain why in just a little bit. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. Make it a great Saturday morning, everyone. We're back in just a moment.